All right, let's have some your nose fun. Nose out through your mouth. Square breathing, you know that? The square breathing, it obviously works, but what would you square breathing is in through your nose? Out through your mouth. So if we did that again without talking in through your nose? Do it with us, everybody. <laughs> I feel if I do it once more, I'm going to fall off this bar stool. Is that supposed to calm it's, energy? It's supposed to calm you. It's literally used for anxiety. My mom, when I was younger, because I've dealt with anxiety my whole life, she used to tell me, Alyssa, you need to do your square breathing anytime I get worked up and anxious. So anytime, current day, at my current age, if I'm stressed, I take a deep breath in through my nose. through my mouth and I feel so much better. I'm not kidding. If you do it a few times, it works. Well, I just want to just throw this in there. I think it almost makes it worse because now I feel that I'm short of breath and that I'm going to pass out, which is creating more anxiety. <laughs> well, I don't think that that is the technical reasoning behind it. I wish I had the exact specifics. I could always look it up while you do our opening. Well, one more thing I want to <laughs> add before the opening. I had an acting coach. Her name was Lee Kilton Smith, and she was one of my favorite coaches, and she had a technique that if you were nervous before going into an audition, she goes, bring a sweater or okay. a zip jacket hoodie, roll it up, go into the bathroom, and scream into it, because I think it has that same effect where you're just getting out that nervous wow. energy so that you are kind of almost like a little depleted. And that was one of Joe Rogan's um, tips when it comes to just like living life and, and rocking it is that you have to do something that is very challenging so that everything else you're doing in your life doesn't seem as challenging. Mm. So if you do like the hardest workout where you're like near death of an hour of pushing yourself to the absolute brink of exhaustion, yeah. it kind of gets out any sort of negative energy, but it also makes everything else you're doing throughout the day. You're just like, I just almost died in the gym. <laughs> this phone call or this pitch meeting or this whatever, is just not even close to what I put myself through. Interesting. So that's all that kind of stuff. But um, How, did you ever do that? <laughs> put your bring a sweater. Well, I <laughs> um, I might have maybe once or something. But I was auditioning so much back in the day that I was never nervous just because I did it so much. Yeah. It was just every day, every day, mm. every day. Like I haven't done one in so long that if I went in today. I'd be curious if I have some Ooh. butterflies if it was in person. Putting it on tape, absolutely not. But if it was like me having to drive, park, go, walk in, sit there, sign in. Uh, Freddie? Yeah, yeah. I feel you thrive, though, with being in front of people. Like in meetings. I mean, of course, an audition's a little different, but I think you'd be just fine. I think it's the practice is where your autopilot takes over. Yeah. The more and more you speak in front of camera or on stage or in meetings, the more you do it, even if you're nervous, your autopilot kind of picks yeah. up. And um, I think I'd be fine. I definitely think mm. I'd have butterflies, but I think once I would get in there, it would be great because back when I used to audition, back in like 2013 or 14, I was still in the wrong mindset where I would walk in and just be like, I'm just so lucky to be here, thank you, like in my mind, where I would go, okay, like I hope they like me, like I've prepared, like do I say hello, do I make small talk? I was very thinking selfishly, yeah. where now that I've learned that I would walk in and have the energy of like, you're all so lucky I'm here because you're looking for the perfect person and I'm that guy. Whether they pick me or not, my mindset has shifted hmm. that they're like lucky that. that I'm walking in because they're looking for someone they're to looking fill for the, the perfect person, and here I am. It's me. And I'm controlling the room. So I never understood when my manager at the time or acting coach would say, you need to control and demand the room. But then I made it demanding and controlling in a selfish way where I was in there trying to demand and control it as an act mm -hmm. rather than understanding now when I walk in that if I like the vibe here and I like the offer that you give me, first of all, you're lucky I'm here. Second of all, if I like the offer you give, if you want to book me, I'll see if I want to do it. Now, again, I would never come off cocky. I would right. never say that, but it's a different mindset. So anytime you're going into a situation, little side note, is wherever you're walking into, that person's lucky. Mm -hmm. How lucky are they that Julie is stepping in for the interview? You're being interviewed right now. Aren't they lucky? 
because you're the perfect person for the job. They're just so lucky to have you. So go in there and have some fun. So it was just funny that, that I would I would use those techniques to put myself in the right mindset yeah. and hopefully not have butterflies. Um, but yeah, things have changed. Things have changed. All mindset. <laughs> All Interesting, mindset. right? Mindset's a very well, important thing. Let's rock this opening real quick. Welcome everyone to the Freddie and Alyssa Show. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to like the page, that would be awesome. If you're listening on a platform like iTunes, hello out there. If you want to leave us a five-star review because you think we deserve it, that would be amazing. We've been putting up content now for almost four years professionally, and we couldn't be doing what we love without the help of all of you. As you can see, we have been doing this for four years, as I could probably sleep and close my eyes and do my opening. <laughs> Anywho, everyone gets it, but if you are new and you want to subscribe and take a look at uh, the book of business that we have built over four years. We have a lot of videos here on YouTube mm -hmm. and the audio and all that fun stuff. But um, today I want to talk about my jacket. <laughs> Where have I seen this jacket before, sir? Well, this jacket, see here, here's, here's something that's happening in my life. Okay. And this was, you know, when I go live on TikTok and Instagram and I get questions from all of you and on YouTube, I went live on YouTube all at the same time. I appreciate your questions so much because it, it makes me think of things that I hadn't, I haven't thought about yeah. in a while. And this is something I was talking about briefly on the live, but I was kind of having a slight identity crisis when it came to putting out content around who I am mm -hmm. because someone asked if you were going to start doing real estate content. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I know we're going to be filming a lot of stuff for you. And I want to actually ask you, I'm going to hold my thought. What is your whole thoughts on filming real estate? Has there been a reason that you've waited to do it? Is there like, why do you want to do it? Or like, what's your whole reasoning about kind of sprinkling it? Or like, are you going to jump in heavier with it? Like, let's start yeah. there and then I'm going to share my little point of view. I like that. So for me, obviously we've been creating content for quite some time now. And a lot of it has been lifestyle, um, for me, you know, fashion, wellness, mindset, all that type of stuff. And so when you're building and you're growing your audience, they come to you for a specific thing, right? So when I started real estate, it was very important to me to only sprinkle it in and not come in too hot, too heavy, because I don't want someone who follows me for one reason to be like, whoa, what is going on here? And I'm the type of person, I'm never just about one thing on social media. I share my whole life. I share things I love, things, food, you know, different um, outfits I love, fashion, all that good stuff. So with real estate, I have sprinkled it in, but I also really wanted to get in there and you know be working and have a bunch of deals under my belt and really see and experience and taste the feeling of doing deals before i really started doing a lot of content because i think that's really important and i definitely believe at this point i have enough under my belt to speak from experience and of course to share my journey i'll look back in three years and go oh Alyssa, you, you know you're so new and fresh with it but i'm really excited and at this point i really have a lot to share whether that be tips for buyers or sellers or maybe that's for other agents or people who are interested because I get a lot of people who will find me on TikTok or Instagram and they'll ask me questions saying, hey, I saw your video, I'm curious. I'm in the process of trying to be an agent and then they'll ask a question. So there are just a lot of different um, points of view. I'm also very interested in sharing um, as well what's going on in the different markets so that people can educate themselves and know exactly what's going on because it's a little cray cray right now. So that's kind of where I sit with it. But what were you going to add to that or say before? Well, yeah, no, but I, th I think it's what me and Alyssa have both done is, is try, because as much as we try to make this um, look easy and the, the more you put out videos, the more you put out content, you do get better. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot that goes behind it. I think that's always the, the greatest job. You know, even when I was on, on days, the more you do it, the more you make it look easy and the more comfortable you get. You know, the actor who's brand new the first week is going to have a little more butterflies than someone who's been there seven years. So you have to work your way into it. But we're also not just producing content. We are creating like our own kind of media company that yeah. Gary Vee has said. So we're, 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 we're thinking short term, we're thinking how can we entertain, educate, or inspire all of you, but also is this going to parlay into a long lasting career with social media? Because there's a pro and a con. The person who does all fitness stuff, 
can do fitness stuff and build a huge business online, partner with a protein shake, partner with athletic gear, and everything about their entire page is athletics. But what we've noticed in our life, if we do just one thing, it it then becomes a little obtuse to start sharing other things. Right. So as much as we're going against the grain by not picking one niche, because most realtors in this example, if you look at their Instagram, it's Amy the realtor and every post is realty, realty, sure. realty. And then they throw in a picture of their kids, but it almost feels like they're throwing in a picture of their kids because someone said, hey, don't do too much real estate, but you can right. still feel that. Right. So we look at how to curate our grids and our social medias so that the user has the best experience. Yeah. So we're always thinking about as much as we want to get a product or service, mm -hmm. something across, we always think about how would we be as the user or consumer? How do other creators that we look up to and follow make us feel? What's something they do that I really like? So we try to mold it. And that is what happened even with Days of Our Lives. I understood in 2014, 15, 16, 17, especially, all my Instagram, all my followers were Days of Our Lives fans. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I didn't post about my life. Everything was days, mm -hmm. and people didn't look up Freddie Smith. They were looking up Sonny, who is played by Freddie Smith. So I had like 20,000 or 30,000 people follow me for Sonny. Then I started getting interested in like business, entrepreneurship, yeah. marketing, and I started doing some other things. And I gradually brought that in because I felt like my character Sonny was positive and it was very like it yeah. fit the brand. But there were still portions about money, business, and comedy that I didn't really know how to work into right. my, <laughs> my, my world, my feed, and all of that. So I slowly started working that in. But when TikTok came along about 18 months or two years ago, whenever we started, this was a clean slate for me. For the first time, I was able to start fresh on a platform without having that pressure of pleasing all my wonderful followers who want to see one thing and not like throwing them off where all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, what's going on? So I started building on TikTok silently. I rarely promoted it. Yeah. And I just built and built and built. And I built an entire audience and fan base on TikTok based around me as Freddie Smith, who just so happens to play Sonny, where Instagram started as Sonny, who happens to be Freddie Smith. And so now over a couple year period, yeah. I have been able to blend that where people are really excited about Freddie the person. And I've been getting so many compliments. So thank you because I love doing comedy. I love talking about personal development yeah. and I love talking about business. Yeah. Those are like my three favorite things but I feel like it was a asserted effort that we didn't do by accident, but we slowly dripped it in over a Absolutely. two, three year period to now I feel I have the brand that I've always wanted. Yeah. That if you go to Freddie Smith's page, you're gonna see that he was Sonny Kiriakis for nine years. He was an actor in Hollywood. He does comedy, he does personal development, and he talks about business. Yeah. And his hobby, he loves techie stuff. Or like yeah. basketball or golf yeah. or like, but I, it, but it took a while and some people might say you overthink that, like just post whatever you want. But mm -hmm. I, I like to bring people on the journey because I, I put all of you first. I, I didn't, I don't want to just start talking about Legos and that's all I talk about. And all everyone's like, well, everything that we followed you for and we've supported you yeah. now you've just completely switched to Legos. And it's right. a Lego page. Right. <laughs> so it's like if you're going to sprinkle in Legos, you can do it over time and then people kind of adjust. But with your real estate, we've talked about how we can do that. And I think, and we don't know yet, that we're just going to pick one day a week whenever this happens where you can film a video mm -hmm. and we'll post on a specific day of the week on YouTube so that if you're interested in it, you'll know that every Friday or right. whatever day is real estate. And if you're not, then you're like, well, on Friday, I love and support them, but like, I'm just going to wait for my Wednesday episode. Yeah. But we can start creating our YouTube channel to be like an actual television channel where there's days of our lives at one o'clock and then there's Ellen at four and then there's Wheel of Fortune and then right. there's like a prime time. So you know, if you follow NBC, you know what time to tune in for what you like, but it's still that channel. So we want to turn our YouTube almost into a network where each day or at eventually different times, you'll start to be like, oh, these are the things I'm really interested in. I'm going to tune in at those yeah. times. 
And so that's kind of the whole thought process behind it. But to bring it full circle back to the jacket, this is what started, kind of gave me the green light when it came to comedy is this jacket. Because I did, you probably have seen it maybe, I did a voice dub where there was Brandon Rogers who did this bit where he goes, kids, grab your S, we're leaving. And that was a voiceover, but it was my first viral comedy video where I felt the feeling of what I believe a stand-up comic would feel, Yeah. where there were 3.3 million views on this video and people were laughing. And I go, this is so cool. And I kind of got hooked and I go, well, let me just try like some original comedy. And I had this jacket That's and right. two years ago I was in New Jersey and I decided to do like sick 90s burns, which is like, you know, someone goes, I'm hungry. Hi, I'm Freddie. Nice to meet you. And I wore this jacket and pretended to be this guy from the 90s. And it was the first time that I wrote something that was comedy, mm-hmm. original, yep. that people that it went mini viral and people loved it. Yep. And it just made me feel like a million bucks. And it kind of gave me the green light to get into comedy and to keep doing it. But it was two years old. I got way better at editing. I got way better at just TikTok in general. So I wanted to redo it with an updated version. And I did. And so now the jacket's back because I'm going to do like a few different iterations of it. But I just thought that was really neat to kind of share. And I just wanted to thank you all for your support because I know Alyssa and I do a lot of different things. We try a lot of stuff. But I think that's what's what we're really starting to realize is who we are as people. We, we want to go on new adventures. We want to learn new skills and we're never afraid to try things. And you've all been here with us through yep. all these iterations of our life from writing a book at one point to doing marketing and sales, um, to traveling to different podcasts and different locations and yeah. fashion and brand deals and acting and business stuff. And now yeah. real estate for you. Like there's so many things. So just thank you for your ongoing support because it makes us feel so good. And I love that we can just try new things, put it out to the world. And we're just so grateful to have you. So that was my Aww, jacket story. I love the jacket story. And I think too, to wrap this topic up at the end of the day, what feels I think the most organic to us when it comes to posting on social media is truly just documenting everything that's happening in our life. You know, whether yes. it's good, whether it's bad, we're always pretty open and <laughs> y'all are the first to know what's happening. So even going back years and years and years ago, there are always going to be different seasons of our life. And we're at an age where we really are finding out who we are. We are finding out our voice, even yeah. with you on TikTok, like, he, okay, so Instagram, you have what, like 60,000 followers? So a majority of that came from Days of Our Lives. You know, that's how people knew you. But he started on TikTok at zero, as everyone does. But it started, he built his audience there to what, like 140,000 now? From doing all this content he's talking about, you know, from doing his comedy, from doing, you know, sometimes the personal development to doing your, your, all of the stuff that you just mentioned. Yeah, you, just you wild. Can, you, it's, <laughs> some of it's bad. Uh, you never know what's going to be good or bad. That's the cool part. But it's trial and error. And that is what we're always open to do. We're, we're open to trip and fall and stumble right in front of you because we're figuring it out. So yeah. that's what we've been doing. And I'm really excited that you found your voice on all these platforms and that with real estate, that's something I'm just so wildly passionate about. And so I really wanted to just get in there, you know, get all of the experience that I could underneath my belt before really talking about it, I'd say on YouTube. Like I'll do TikToks, I'll do Instagrams, of course, because I love to share life. That's yeah. And that's what's been going on. So if you guys do follow me there, you see these different things. But when it comes to YouTube, I, in my personal belief, I just really felt, I go, I need to have experience. I need to know exactly what's going on. And that's kind of where we're at today. So now I'm experienced and ready to chat. <laughs> I think, cause you, you start, you got your license on May 13th, mm-hmm. um, June, July, August, September, October. So November 13th will be six months. And I think that's super fair Yep. that you didn't want to start prematurely because there's people who have, you know, you needed to do a bunch of deals. Yeah. You needed to understand in, in order to, to share properly what is valuable, what are things that you've learned. Definitely. And, um, and you're great on front of the camera because you've done maybe like three videos on your own. I know. And we got to do more with you because there's even one that she did about the ring, about ring shopping. Great video. Mm. And it did really well. And it still runs to this day. 
So she put that video up two years ago and we still get paid on that video today because it was done really well. You're really good at it. And Aww. she is so, like that's where her and I differ the most <laughs> drastic is she has to have a script and she has to like do it in segments and she knocks it out of the park. I'm the opposite. I will sit here and do 17 takes if I have to, but I will not use a script. I have to he improv hates it. it. He goes, let me improv. And for me, I think it's just being prepared. I have to, like anything I do in life, I need to know about it. And more than you could ever imagine, I need to know about it before I do it. Like I need a script. I need to know what I'm talking about. I'm just so crazy. Maybe that's because I'm very type A and I'm just very specific. But he's like, yeah, let me just go roll with it. And that's fine. I've done it before and I can roll with it. I just don't prefer that way. Yeah. I love a script. I love to know what I'm talking about. I love organization. I just. Well, I, I feel like I know what I'm going into. And maybe I know that I can fix it in post. Hmm. Because I, I, when I, if I talk for 17 minutes, I can edit seven good minutes of it. Where you're just like, well, let's just do a seven minute video and I'll say everything in order. <laughs> so it kind of makes more sense. But yeah, I'm, I'm pumped about that because it's going to be like an evergreen video, which is really important when it comes to building on YouTube. And the difference is essentially if me and Alyssa did a movie or we did a, say we did a TV review of Squid Games, people are only going to click on that video for about one week and then everyone will have either seen Squid Games right. or it's over and no one will ever click on that video again. It's done. But an evergreen video is a video that can live on forever. So like engagement ring shopping tips, that video could run for 10 years mm -hmm. because it's performing well. Doing real estate videos of explaining the difference between an FHA loan and a conventional loan will always be YouTubed and Googled. So it's an evergreen video. Mm -hmm. So that is what's really great for long-term growth on a YouTube channel. And the other great part is that somebody who's looking to get a loan is probably looking to buy and it's free advertising. So Alyssa's gonna have another avenue to attract clients. So I, I think it's just gonna be beautiful and I'm excited to sit down. We're still like probably weeks away from getting some of these out, but I'm pumped for you all to see it. Um, and I think it's gonna add a lot of value to the page. And, and it's real estate, which everybody at some point is, I think it's, it's wonderful to know and wise to know things about such a big purchase yeah. in your life. Like you're going to probably sell or buy a home at some point or your kids or your parents. Like there's going to be things about real estate, yeah. just like taxes and just like money. Like there's a lot of stuff yet again that I just feel I'm waiting until there's a little bit more experience before I start giving like practical advice. Sure. I talk about money and I give kind of like broad advice, but I see myself in six months to a year having another day of the week or a different time mm -hmm. slot where it's just finances, where I can help people with where to invest if you got a hundred bucks extra a month or what to do to cut down expenses, like go through all the stuff. Like I love that. Yeah. My buddy calls me all the time, like once a month. He's like, we're going over the expenses and the debt. Let's go over <laughs> this. And we go over his spending. Like it's the, the true passion of mine. But I just yet again, haven't gotten to the point where I feel comfortable coming out as a guy to do that right. but i will in the future of just like how you took some time and now you're ready Absolutely. to do real estate so yeah we're going to be evolving and continuing to grow and and so also for, too y'all yeah. know we love doing videos about topics that you want to hear about if there's anything specific in the real estate arena that you go "Ooh, i've always wanted to know this or what about loans or whatever it might be you know who knows what you're going through or you've been curious to learn let us know below if you're listening um on iTunes, then maybe hop over to YouTube or Facebook. You can let Drop us know a there. Comment, yeah. Instagram, we're all, we'll check everything. But yeah, it's always great to create around what you guys want to hear because at the end of the day, we want to add value. We're making it for you. Yeah. yeah, we're making it for you and for other people who are going to come into the into the net here. And yeah. um, and you know that's that's kind of the goal is how do we just acquire like minded people who are along for this journey and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm really liking it. I'm really, really liking this whole content creator space. And, um, and I'm, I mean, I'm excited really to keep good. building it, you know. Um, but to just to pivot over, to do a little, let's do a little pop culture news. A little a li pop culture slash. It's kind of real estate, babe. Kind of. Airbnb. It seems like it's a more <laughs> pop culture-y, but I get where you're going with it. 
Um, this is a topic that Alyssa is going to absolutely adore. And I would actually participate if the timing of this was right, but you have to be picked. But you can explain everything. But do you uh, want to talk about our pop culture <gasps> news for the day? I do, y'all. First and foremost, who here has ever seen Sex in the City? Boo doo 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 doo. Do, do, do. Okay, I have to stop now. Don't want YouTube to cut us off. <laughs> oh, they hear your, your singing. <laughs> All right, guys, we have some very exciting news. If you have ever been a fan of Sex in the City, I have a little article here with the details about this huge topic, but it turns out that Carrie Bradshaw's apartment from the beloved hit series Sex in the City and soon to be, and just like that, which is the next series coming and just like that and just like that so it, so that's so sex in the city is not sex in the city no, like reboot it's no. called and just like that the reboot is called and just like that why is it called that because that is what carrie bradshaw used to always say in all of her little um uh what do you call that in her news voiceovers that too yeah she go and just like that it was huh. just a really big thing and so all of us diehards when we heard that title we go oh is that was that like the first iteration of XOXO Gossip Girl? Sure, one hundred percent. So Sex in the City was the nineties. XOXO Gossip Girl was early to mid two thousands. Yep. And I wonder what we have now. Oh gosh. Would it be you? Even though I haven't seen that yet, I, I, don't, no, I think no, use a little is, more. No, absolutely not. No, that's, that's not the. We're talking like these really great rom com, woman, female driven. Oh, shows, okay. not serial killers. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> I think yeah, that's yeah. what he's about. Yeah. But anywho, back to the news, guys. I didn't even get to tell them the big news. Airbnb is now hosting Carrie Bradshaw's apartment, but for two nights only. Let me explain. So it turns out that they are having, and just like that, come out very soon. To, so to celebrate the 23 years of Sex in the City, they go, what better way to promote this than to put Carrie Bradshaw's apartment up on Airbnb, two nights only for $23 a night. But here's the big kicker. You have to go to the internet, sit at your computer, your phone, whatever you think, and be the first person. I think it's December 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, I did know that. On Airbnb site, and they're going to pick two lucky winners. So to give you guys just a little backstory on this. And this is from today, the <laughs> the company today you wanted to be by sure Carrie Breen. You. Okay, let's go, baby. Who hasn't dreamed about spending the night in Carrie Bradshaw's luxurious New York City apartment? I know I have. Now, thanks to Airbnb, some lucky Sex in the City fans can stay in a recreation of the glamorous Manhattan brownstone before the premiere of And Just Like That, the highly anticipated sequel. So it's going to be a recreation, not the exact set. It's not going to be the exact one. Okay, okay. Still cool. Still still cool. cool. Uh, The apartment will only be available for two one-night stays, November 12th and 13th, for just $23 a night. Interested fans can request to book beginning Monday, November 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern on Airbnb's site. Of course, it wouldn't be Sex in the City without a greeting from Carrie herself. The lucky selected guest will be welcomed with a video message from Sarah Jessica Parker and a narration reminiscent of each episode's thought-provoking intro, according to a press release. That's so cool. Love Hmm. a good detail. The recreated apartment will also include Carrie's iconic closet, which houses her famous tutu and plenty of shoes. Just so you know, in the opening of the entire show, when that song's going off, she's dancing kind of walking in front of this big bus and she has this big tutu on and the bus hits the water because it was raining and it just goes right on her. And she goes, oh no. And the bus that's going by has this big photo of her because she writes a sex column. Okay. So yeah, that tutu will be in the closet. Guests will also receive a complimentary styling session and photo shoot so that they can channel their inner fashion stars and enjoy Cosmos, the show's quiz essential cocktail during a brunch in Chelsea. The Carrie Bradshaw character is near and dear to my heart and revisiting her world for the continuation of the Sex and the City story has been such a joy, said Parker in a statement. I'm excited for our audience to experience Carrie's New York like never before and walk in her shoes, quite literally, for the very first time. 
So here's what I've been thinking the whole time. What's that? Is I'm trying to get the... So it, it, it appears that the production company of Sex in the City has mm-hmm. partnered with Airbnb. They recreated this set to cross-promote each other's businesses. Because yep. charging just $23 a night, they went the route to be cute for advertising to have people like us talk about it. Yep. They didn't do it more like a charity would have been like 50000 a night so that they could have raised right. money. But now Airbnb is pushing Sex in the City and Sex in the City is driving all this traffic to Airbnb. So if people don't get the 23 room and pick, <laughs> they might just end up finding another house in Fiji and spend money on the site. Right. And that is genius. It's genius. And it's only two nights. When I first saw this today, I go, ooh, they're, they're, what a cool business. Someone's so smart. And then I started reading and I go, oh, it's 23 years celebrating right up to the premiere of And Just Like That. Like it all just kind of started making sense. They're getting the free press because everyone's talking about it. Everyone's going to tell their friends that they're trying to get it. Yep. So it's brilliant. So the series will premiere on the streaming service HBO Max in December. So that's why they're doing this November 12th and 13th. And I have to tell you too, I was looking at all the photos of it and they really crushed every detail. They even have like her signature Curse of Carrie necklace on the nightstand. They have the old phone that she used to have. They have her Manolo Blahniks. There's this really iconic blue pair, I think from the very first movie that is sitting in the closet. And they're saying that all of the, or the two special guests that get to go with a friend get to go in the closet and try the stuff on. So it's I think it's an awesome experience for the diehard fan. Oh yeah. I would freak to get I'll this. probably check it out maybe when it comes out. Let's see, November twelfth. So babe, if I can get this, we're going <laughs> to New I York. mean you might as well try. It would be a great press even for us. Oh, that's true. So November eighth at twelve PM Eastern on Airbnb site. So we're gonna have twelve PM Eastern's noon. Yes. So that's Monday at noon. Monday at noon. But I don't think it's first come first serve or the cra- the site would crash. I think it's just they're going to start accepting applications. No way. It's not going to be first come first serve. Interested fans can request to book beginning Monday. Beginning Monday well, at 12 Well, that's interesting. Eastern. There's no way they're only going to do this for two days. Maybe at $23 and then once they go, wow, we got millions of people who want to come here. I think it's announce- just... I don't think so. I think it's just all promotion. I think they're just going to have it randomly selected. They're going to just pick people or they're going to have a huge team of people vet the people to make sure they're not going to steal the necklace. But I think they're just going to get a million or two people requesting. They're just going to randomly pick people and then they're going to call them up and go. Well, we'll see. Well, hopefully we're coming back here next week giving you the update. Saying that we we potentially got it. it. (laughs) A girl can dream. And just like that. And just like that, we might be going to New York. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll check that out. There's a lot of good shows coming out soon. I know uh, Dexter just came back, but I'm going to let that build up. Curb Your Enthusiasm, let that build up. Can't wait to watch And that. Uh, then Ozark, I heard that new season's not till January, but that'll be here before we know it. I'm not trying to rush time, so that'll be nice to have that in January. But yeah, a lot of good stuff coming out. That's super interesting. Um, so if you're a Sex and the City fan, then you might want to hop on Get that on as it. well. But uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go run. We have to go do a Target run, Target which I'm very run. very pumped for. And uh, we'll be back here next Wednesday. So again, thank you all for your ongoing support. We're wishing you the best week ever, and we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.